Hello everyone and welcome back. Oh, and it's our one year anniversary, no less. Well, welcome back to Taito Ecology Biodomes of Plenty. And my voice just cracked because I have a bad cold. Well, that's kind of a interesting way to dive back into our Himalayan biome, but welcome, welcome everyone. It has now been two, let's see, two years through nine, you won't get any achievements. Aw, all right, well, we got our first birthday achievement for being here in our Himalayan biodome dome unfortunately named bamboo montai uh next time i will definitely try to use a little more care in naming our biodomes but we are back we are back in biodomes oh plenty and i am so happy to see how excited so many of you guys were for taito ecology to come back it really is a very charming game there's just something about being able to dive in and watch our little pika as they run around the place eating up all of these mushrooms oh look there's the moths our wonderful little pollinators and to craft up a functional ecosystem from the literal ground up, from decomposers all the way through our insectivores, our herbivores, building up to our big predators. There's just something so deeply rewarding about that. Oh, and look, it's a baby pika. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Is it coming over to eat this mushroom? I do think it is coming to eat this mushroom. No? You're smaller than the mushroom. That is adorable. All right. Well, let's check in on how our Himalaya biodome has done since we last left it. Even though it's been a little while since we've been back to check in on it ourselves, it is about six weeks, uh, I believe, has passed in our biodome, and things look a little bit different. I feel like the bamboo has not spread as quickly as I hoped, but we do have some baby bamboo. This is very young bamboo. You can see it has 70 weeks until it's going to end up maturing. And then uh, we do have a lot of missing patches of greenery. We are missing all of our ferns. In fact, if you look around, everywhere you look, I don't see a single patch of ferns. So let's see, is there any report? A group of mushrooms has low population. Noted. I missed out on any of the reports over what happened while we're gone, but we can definitely see it with our very own eyeballs that, oh yeah, these maidenhair ferns are really struggling to survive with as many pika as are out and about. So let me turn on really quickly. I have to remember how to do it. I want to toggle the territories. So let's turn on the territories. How are our pika doing? 18 juveniles. Oh my goodness. And they're going to uh, start reproducing again in 14 weeks and their hunger is kind of going up so if we don't keep enough food for our pika to eat then they're going to start starving and unfortunately there's two ways that you can you can kind of trade oh my gosh they just destroyed that grass population did you see that they just finished eating all of those plants oh my goodness I don't think that the Himalaya fairy grass has much of a chance against all of these hungry little rodent mouths so there's two things we can do to try to to balance out our pika population and continue to take good care of them here in our Himalaya biodome. And this is going to sound a little bit weird to some of you, but one of those things is actually introducing predators. And that's going to be very confusing for some people to wrap your head around about the idea of being able to take care of these little rodents by introducing a predator who would start eating them. But that is more taking care of our little pika from this point of view, from the objective point of view of thinking about the population as a whole versus the population as composed of a bunch of little individuals. From the individual level, no, introducing some sort of predator to start eating all of these itty bitty babies is not going to be good for the pika. But from a overall species population point of view from up here, that is one of the important ways that we could provide a more healthy environment for our pika by making sure that their resources are kind of balanced and kept in check by their population being kept in check. They're not interested in eating the bamboo. So the bamboo is going to continue to spread really nicely and like go through our whole biodome. I'm very, very much hoping that the bamboo will continue to just move on and process propagate and when we come back we'll just find like a thick forest of bamboo eventually for our red pandas and our elephants to enjoy that would be really cool but we need to take care of the animals that we currently have so oh and now you can see the mushrooms are almost 
extinct. This territory of mushrooms are almost completely wiped out because they are becoming a food source for all these juveniles. Juveniles, oh my goodness. Uh, all these juvenile uh, pika. So what are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? The other thing we could do is just constantly keep smacking down a bunch of ferns and crossing our fingers that we would eventually hit this sweet spot with our ferns where we would have more ferns than, uh, than the pika could possibly eat before the ferns have a chance to reproduce. So that's an option. You could try to go and top out as many of the plants as you possibly have to keep up with your hungry little rodent mouth population but I don't think that's very viable because you can already see we saw it firsthand that they wiped out oh and they've almost wiped out this patch of Himalayan fairy grass so they're acting like locusts kind of spreading out across the land and eating everything and if they're not kept in check they will just continue to eat everything and eventually because they breed so quickly their populations will continue to go up and they'll continue to eat everything after that and uh, if nothing keeps them in check then everything will end up dying and this place will become a barren desert little desert mountain and we don't want that so yeah unfortunately just adding more plants eventually we're gonna lose that balance too and that's what setting up these ecosystems is all about is providing a bit of that balance oh my gosh and look at all of them all the pika are coming over and stuffing themselves on these ferns and then falling asleep so with that being said, what kind of predators can we add in to possibly provide a little bit more of that balance in our biodome? And I think for this Himalaya biodome, we're going to be adding in the red fox. That would be quite intriguing to me. I think the red fox will work out well. It is an omnivore. Let's go ahead and unlock it and maybe do a little bit of researching about it. In fact, I think I can open up... Dun, 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 dun. I'm pretty sure somewhere around here should be I can't remember how to open up my little information panel my biodex there we go but somewhere in here we should have some information on the fox before we actually put it down probably a good thing to do to make sure hey hey is it under red fox yeah it's under red fox vulpus vulpus wonderful foxes are omnivores they usually eat small mammals like mice and rabbits but will also eat fruit or carrion and carrion is going to be like your rotting dead things which is very good to make sure that everybody makes use of all of the energy sources that they can and cleans up after the dead stuff most foxes are taken as prey as babies. Adults may be attacked by wolves, cougars, or eagles. Now that's interesting. I've never seen an eagle attack a fox, but I could see that happening. Foxes have a special way of hunting for mice in deep snow. They will stand perfectly still in the snow, listening for the mouse. Once they hear it, they jump straight up into the air and land on their front paws right on the mouse, which I have seen. It's very beautiful and interesting when that happens. If they calculate it properly, the mouse will be pinned to the ground and will make a tasty snack. So it looks like mice, or in our case, pika, are going to be the food for the red foxes here in our Himalaya forest biodome. Uh, and they're highly adaptable. They can be found in forests, grasslands, tundras, deserts, urban areas, and even the Arctic. I think that we can actually uh, put foxes down in some of the other biodomes, so it would be nice to get used to having a population here. Hopefully, they will just keep our pika populations in check. Over here, we've got another 18 juveniles. Over here, we have six. So there's already a ton of adults, and they can all breed. And as soon as those juveniles age up and become adults, they'll split off into a new territory, and they can all breed. And you can see how that's going to cause a lot of exponential growth of our little rodent mouths and they're going to eat everything. So let's start with a red fox because I think that it's important to keep this population in check. Uh, and where would we want the red fox's territory to go? Would we want it to go over all? I think the red fox would probably move in where the pika are kind of congregated. So we're going to put it down inside of this bamboo forest. Let's come down and see how they're doing. <gasps> Beautiful, just gorgeous. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him go. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. Oh, where's he going? Is he going straight? This must be like fox paradise. Are you kidding? You get to come right in and there's all these pika all over the place. There's plenty of food. I think these two will be very happy. And let's add in, we're going to need some more mushrooms actually because the pika are eating the mushrooms like no tomorrow. So let's put in some of the mushrooms and let's put in some of the larger plants as well. Let's get some mid-level uh, bushes and things like that popping in. Like the rhododendron, which is very beautiful. 
the Himalayan balsam. After all, we are doing dun, 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 the biodomes of plenty. And so our challenge goal is to try to get healthy biodomes that will have at least one of all of the various creatures that you can put in, which is not something I've ever tried to do in Taito Ecology. Like I said last time, oh, they're coming for the mushrooms. Oh, the poor mushrooms. The pika are already coming for these mushrooms. Oh, but he's so hungry. Oh, so we just because we're adding in um, something to help kind of keep the pika population. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Those are all dead baby pika. Oh my goodness gracious. And they didn't die from the foxes. They died because they starved to death. So uh, one, we're going to have to do this the two prong way. One way is leaving the fox to handle the pika problem, the pika overpopulation problem that we're having here by eating it. So he is going to be eating the pika and having these meat points that he eats and then the pika will eventually decompose and decay like so. Uh, so that's going to be good for our fox. And when do our foxes breed, I wonder? Doesn't say yet, but their hunger is definitely being attended to. Let's see if we can come over here. Their hunger is definitely being attended to. Yeah, 44 weeks until they reproduce. So they should be just fine. They have lots and lots of pika to enjoy, but the pika still need to reproduce. They still need to have a viable environment to live in. And if the babies just starved in mass right there, then we need to start kind of building stuff up a little bit more. So maybe we'll get some goji berries and some pomegranates uh, added in. Let's try unlocking these goji berries. And we'll put down some goji berry bushes. That would be very fun. I think that the pika may possibly eat these goji berries. So we'll put down a whole bunch of fruits. I'm not sure if the foxes will eat the goji berries, but we'll read up on the goji berries in just a second. All right, there we go. There we go. And we'll let those kind of settle in. And let's see, goji enjoy the clay rich soil of the arid alpine and temporal range. Let's see, they grow in Northern China, but also thrive in most of Asia. English speechers have coined the term wolfberry for the goji's fruit because the Chinese character go refers to dogs or wolves. Interesting. Uh, reproduction, the goji's bright red berry, which, which ripens from July to October, can hold up to 60 seeds. Goji tend to live about five years and begin reproducing at about two years of age. Ooh, so our goji bushes are going to need to survive the onslaught of all of those hungry little pika mouths for quite a while if they want to be able to reproduce and start having more bushes pop up in our ecodome or our biodome. The largest harvest of goji berries occurs in China, where about 445 million kilograms are harvested at once. That's a lot. Let's see. Both the goji's leaves and fruits are enjoyed by animals. Its fruit, the goji berry, is rich in vitamin B and amino acids. I know it's supposed to be one of those super fruits good for you, so I'll look that up later because maybe I should start eating them. They're a little tart and bitter. I've had goji berries before. Let me know if you guys have had goji berries and how you enjoy them if you do, because I would like to try to eat more things full of healthy antioxidants, but man, goji berries are very tart and bitter. Goji berries actually ho hold more vitamin C than most citrus. In many Asian countries, goji berry juice is taken with each meal. I had no idea. Huh. And I'm in Asia right now in Taiwan, so maybe I should look around for some of this. Recent studies and examinations of the goji berry have led many to suspect the goji berry may help reduce cancerous cells, though it has been neither proven nor thoroughly tested. Yeah, always be careful of the claims of those superfoods, you guys. Oh my gosh! Our goji berries are dead! Oh my goodness, both of them are dead already. Oh, we've got to feed these little guys. You know what we're going to try to feed them with that reproduces fast and that might be able to survive the onslaught of hungry, hungry pika? Mushrooms. And I know there's a running joke in that I just love mushrooms, and I do. I think they're a fascinating fungi, and I love how they just pop up out of nowhere when you go on walks. And I really love the delicious taste of portobello mushrooms and cremini mushrooms and stuffed mushrooms. And I could go on because I think they're delicious and cool, and they come in such a huge variety. But mushrooms are also fascinating because they reproduce so quickly, and they need so little in order to make their fruiting bodies which are what you actually see of these mushrooms. So hopefully 
<laughs> Hopefully the mushrooms, it can fill the pika's hungry, hungry tummies. Because if all of our pika die from hunger, then our foxes are going to die from hunger. And clearly we already lost our two attempts at having the goji berry plants because the pika ate all of them. So we're going to have to move fast. We have to, we have to counter this overwhelming population of pika, which definitely, uh, definitely is a little bit too ambitious. All right, most of the juveniles have actually died of hunger. So we, we have to keep them controlled, but we also have to keep them from dying out. And look, this entire area is now bare of any plants. That's so, we've turned the whole top of the mountainside into a desert. How am I ever going to get to the point where we can enjoy watching red pandas and watching clouded leopards and snow leopards frolic in this area if I can't even keep my pika alive? The One of the bottom baselines of our food chain. All right, well, let's see what else we can get done here then, guys. Uh, what else could we add in that the pika might be able to eat that could survive the onslaught of their hungry little mouths a little bit longer? Hmm, maybe more goji berries. The maidenhair fruit just was not reproducing fast enough to keep up with them. Let's try the Himalaya fairy grass again, and let's look at how long the plant is not pollinated. Uh, this plant is always flowering. So let's see, does it need a pollinator nearby? Let's get some pollinators nearby. We do have the beautiful Paris peacock butterfly that we could possibly add in, but I wanna save our Taito coins for just a little bit so we can start unlocking other things. So let's go with more uh, normal, just happy plain moths right up here. And for this guy, for the Himalaya fairy grass, how quickly does it reproduce? You can come over here to the reproduction life cycle stage and learn quite a bit about the real life Himalaya fairy grass, which I absolutely, I love that I can teach you guys about the real natural world whilst we are building up our biodomes of plenty. That is just so exciting. It, it appeals to the former school teacher that I used to be totally all the way. All right, reproduction. The fairy grass reproduces through its seeds, which are blown away in the wind and eaten by animals and vegetatively through the extensive root system so kind of like the, the prairie grasses I'm used to in the Midwest where you want to have a healthy deep root system not eaten to death by a pika <laughs> that will hopefully make it so these guys can survive and spread a single clump of fairy grass can live for up to five years and grow to be more than a meter tall fairy grass tend to outlive most plants after a fire their seeds are dispersed when exposed to great heat so they begin growing back immediately Ooh, so they have adapted and gained traits over the uh, long term of their their evolutionary history that will actually allow them to bounce back after fires. Very cool. All right, now we'll have to see if they can bounce back after hungry pika. All right, this pika is pretty full. I wonder if it was just born. And we might want to get like maybe some joint for a mixed in. We'll try doing maybe some mixes. And if there's better food sources available, maybe the pika will allow our little grassland to spread without eating it to the ground. So maybe we'll do, there we go, wonderful. We'll do some layouts of joint fur, kind of like a backbone of joint fur up here. And then we'll do some fairy grass on either side, since we do know that the pika will eat the fairy grass. And then let's try putting in some, uh, oops, yep, see the pika are starting to show up. And if we have enough patches of fairy grass, enough populations of fairy grass, hopefully they can endure the hungry, hungry mouths of the pika without completely dying off. And I wonder, maybe we could get some gojis in here? The gojis seem to be really beloved by the pika though. They ate those up way too fast. A uh, pomegranate would be really nice. Himalaya honeysuckle would be really nice. And it has a lot of fruit and it also, hmm, I wonder how quickly it reproduces. Let's see if we can check out some of the plants. The faster we can have for the reproduction of the plants, uh, then the better we'll be able to keep everything alive. The more options we give our little pika to focus on eating, the less likely they'll just consume all of one kind of population and wipe out that species entirely from our biodome. So yeah, I think the goji berries will take too long to reproduce and they'll be, they'll be victims of the pika's hungry mouths. So what about the pomegranate? Self-pollinate, insects help to pollinate it. Fruit takes about six months to mature. They live an average of 15 years, but some have been known to last over 200. That's awesome. Uh, rhododendria, the wood apple, won't be able to reproduce until it hits 
15 years of age. Wow, we better get that planted fast so that it can reproduce during the lifetime of our biodome. Uh, and what about the honeysuckle? It attracts many kinds of birds which disperse its seeds. The stems of the honeysuckle are replaced every two to five years and can grow up to a meter in height. Most types of honeysuckle live to be about 25 year or 20 years. And its reproduction rate is a three. So let's look at the plants that have the fastest reproduction rate. And then we'll focus on those, like the blue poppies. And then yeah, the goji has one of the lowest. The Himalayan balsam has a medium reproduction. The Himalaya fairy grass has the fastest. So I think we're going with pretty good ones for what we've already picked out. Poor goji berries just never stood a chance and the foxes are doing their job trying to keep everything in check. So where's the balsam? We'll go ahead and unlock that because that might be another one of the plants that can endure <laughs> against the very, very hungry pika. So we'll put down a few populations of that kind of mixed in and hopefully we'll have built a little, a little spine on top of our mountain range. You can see all of the sleeping pika everywhere around here that will be able to, uh, <laughs> that will be able to withstand these hungry mouths. There we go. So we'll leave all the balsam up here. Maybe reorder it a little bit. There we go. And let's put down, and maidenhair ferns just don't stand a chance. Let's put down some blue poppies too. We'll mix in some blue poppies at random. And maybe with this many varieties of different plants and the fastest reproducing plants up here, the blue poppies and the joint fur and the, uh, let's see, the Himalaya fairy grass, which also is supposed to reproduce super duper fast, we'll be able to We'll be able to give these guys a chance. Oh my gosh, they've already destroyed some of the joint fur. <laughs> this may call for desperate measures, guys. We may have to add in more populations of foxes, more populations of predators. There's 14 juveniles in the pika 11 to... We may have to add in, I think that we're going to add in another population of predators on the other side, guys. I don't want to overdo it by going for a predator that's going to just like completely consume all of the pika at once. Uh, the dull? Maybe the dull? Hmm. They're, they are a large omnivore though, and there's eight of them versus possibly just having two foxes. So you also want to look at the size of a usual population. And in the case of like the Asian black bear, the average population is two. So they're probably going to spread out a little bit. They're not going to eat quite as much. But if we had six gray wolves, they're as a group going to eat a lot more than the Asian black bear at once. So you kind of want to keep an eye on that too. So you don't overdo it. Like look at our Asian elephants. We're going to have so many wood apples. We're going to need to support a population of five Asian elephants. Oh my gosh, they're going to be so hungry. All right, so instead of getting the doll, because that'll be eight animals, eight individuals in a population to try to support. And I don't know if we have enough like pika long-term for that. Let's go ahead and we're gonna get another red fox population and we'll kind of let them overlap over in this back corner. And I don't wanna put down more pika on that side just yet. So we'll hope that the red foxes will be able to work their way over to this edge of the pika populations and kind of keep them in check. So they can help to keep this, this group in check as well. All right, so with that established, maybe the best place to actually give our plants, we're gonna plant some goji berries back here because this is kind of a corner that's somewhat protected from the pika's hungry little rodent mouths. And maybe if we make a little cluster of goji berries over here, they'll have a chance to spread and they'll have a chance to propagate before they end up getting eaten. Let's see. Uh, achievement complete! The what and the bees? There's something about seedy about these fruits because fruits have seeds. Oh yay! We just got an award. That's awesome. Yay! And we got more Taito coins. So we might be able to think about expanding our zones so that we've got more room for those bigger predators. And we might start working since we want to make sure we have at least one of all the different things, might start working on putting down the wood apples soon because the wood apples take so long to mature. So in fact, I'm going to go ahead and unlock that now. And we're going to safely tuck a little wood apple away in this back corner, if it'll fit in here. Come on, wood apple. Where do you want to go? All right, there you go. We're going to safely tuck it down there and have our very first big tree, our big wood apple, that will hopefully escape 
all of those hungry rodents and be able to establish itself here. It's going to take a long time before it enters into its stasis and then it's flowering and then it starts reproducing. But hopefully it'll be nice and happy back there. We'll give it some beautiful peacock butterflies and it can start spreading by the time we want to add in elephants. So, all right, I think that this is going a little bit better. The joint fur is being consumed at an alarming rate. So the last thing I'm going to do is actually build up a big spine of joint fur just because uh, I'm hoping, well, maybe I should build up, let's build up a grassland of Himalaya fairy grass with all of the current energy we have and then cross our fingers, guys, and we'll come back in another few weeks of game time. And next time we'll see how things uh, how things are gonna go with this population. And I will be doing Taito Ecology Biodomes of Plenty, kind of off and on as we wrap up our summer in space. But I do plan on playing it because I love it so much during my free play time in between our two seasons that we have. And while I am adjusting to going back home to the United States, I'm not even in the US right now, which is still really kind of trippy for me to remember. But when I get home to the United States, then uh, I do plan on having like a couple weeks where I just sort of take it easy and play just the games that I really, really enjoy and gear up for the very big events, the very big surprise events we're going to be having with our next seasonal special. So expect a lot of Biodomes of Plenty about then. So thank you guys so much for being so vocal and so happy about letting me know that you really love this and supporting like the, our little pika. Truly, 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 I try to give you guys opportunities to have a voice in what you might be able to see for our community and our adventures. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I, I heard your voices and you speaking up in the comments and you guys leaving likes really, truly helps give me like one of the few algorithms that I have to be able to decide what goes next on our channel. It's very tricky. It's very tricky to figure out like what you should add and how much you should add. So I appreciate it a lot. All right, and yeah, you guys speaking up, never be afraid to speak up when you enjoy something that someone creates because otherwise they won't know that you want more of it. And it really means so much. So I'm very happy because it made me so excited to come back to the pika knowing that so many of you guys would love it. All right, so that little spiel aside, they have almost completely eaten <laughs> my poor flowers. <laughs> Those little patches of flowers are, are like suffering for it for sure. But I think these patches of Himalaya fairy grass going across the top now just may be enough that their roots will sink in and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they'll be able to survive. So I'm going to use the very last of my energy once more to cover the other side of the mountain. And now we'll have to see with the pika no longer dying off due to starvation if we're either going to have the plants just have a fair shot at spreading or if we're going to end up with a pika population explosion that is going to cause so much trouble uh, for being able to keep all of the other plants alive. Look at this. We lost all of our goji berries back here. All of them are gone. And these poor foxes... Oof. All right, I'm going to have to add in more things for the pika to eat over here to support these populations so we can support our foxes. But I think our, uh, our bamboo is also spreading. Nice. All right, well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.